Okay, so let me do this question. I think this is a kind of a setup that doesn't occur in any of your homework questions, and it's actually an interesting setup to analyze. So, uh, so let me do that. Um, the title of the question is "Accelerating Pocket Watch," and the question says a pocket watch hangs by a thin string. It's drawn here vertically, and it says as the train accelerates forward, the watch swings back, setting an angle theta from vertical. Okay, I think all of us have seen situation like that, you know, hang something and you're on a train, it's moving forward and you see kind of hanging back. Um, all right. So part A asks, from the perspective of a passenger in the train, why does the watch swing back while the train is accelerating? All right. So... If you are a passenger on the train, then you are looking at this watch, which swings to one side, and what you have to, um, and and you know, once it's swung to some position, then its acceleration is zero. And looking at that, what you end up having to conclude is that there must be some force that's pushing it this way. Because um, that's how everything happens. You know, imagine something hanging vertically. For this to be off to the side, like, uh, you know, um, like push, uh, like a BLN angle, something would have to be pushing it to the side. That's how that happens. So you have to introduce this, this force. And if we are going by the convention that uh, gravity is only your only non-contact force and everything else requires something touching to exert the force, there's nothing that can be exerting that force. There's tension force that's coming from the string that's pulling that way. And actually the horizontal component tension force is why you have to have that force. And there's gravity pulling it down and nothing is touching it from this side to push it that way, or nothing is touching it from this side, to pull it that way. So where does this come, this force come from? And um, when you are in the accelerating frame, what it ends up being is that there's this pseudo force that you can say is equal to mass times acceleration. And assign this to that pseudo force um, that's associated with the acceleration of frame, and that will give you the right answer. But um, my recommendation, again, is um, roll back all that. Don't do any of what I was just describing. There is no force pushing this uh, hanging mass to the left. There just isn't. So what you should do is scratch this all out. I mean, it's good to consider, you know, how, why, how does it look like for the passenger? This is a way to kind of expose what your intuition tells you what your raw intuition about physical situation tells you. And what I would say is uh, step back and realize that this requires analyze, analysis in accelerating frame. And once you recognize that, then you step away and say, okay, we are not going to use accelerating frame to analyze it. We are instead going to find an inertial reference frame to analyze this situation from. That's the observer on the platform. This will give you the inertial reference frame and you analyze everything from that setup that will give you a solid grounding. You won't be confused by a bunch of different um, uh, uh, pseudo forces, fictitious forces. Uh, it'll give you clarity. So now we are considering where, okay, this is in a train that's moving accelerating oh i guess that's what that is accelerating and you are now considering an observer who's outside the train on the platform looking at this so uh, so let's draw the forces let me draw a proper free body diagram so when i'm drawing a free body diagram um yeah, i'm moving on to c by the way and it'll as we are doing that we'll answer b so as I'm drawing the free body diagram, um, so what I like to draw first is actually gravity, because gravity is nice and it's always there. You know, you don't need things touching one thing, touching another thing. Gravity is just there. So mg, gravity. 
once you draw gravity, then you should be prompted to do, uh, consider other things. So th with this one force, it'll say, oh, it's accelerating downward. And you can see that this is not accelerating downward. So there must be additional forces that make it so that the, um, the watch is accelerating downward. And that other force is coming from this string that's touching the watch. So there must be this is tension force. And that tension force must be balancing out this gravitational force enough that it's not accelerating vertically. Okay, you got those two forces. And, and you know, you consider the situation with enough time and what you're asking yourself is what else is touching the object so they can exert a force. And the answer eventually should be uh, nothing else is touching the watch to exert a force on it. Which means, uh, this is a you know, question that I ask myself, did I draw all the forces? And the answer here is yes, I've drawn all the forces that can be drawn. And with these two arrows drawn this way, there must be acceleration going this way. And from the perspective of the passenger in the train, having this acceleration was confusing, hard to handle. From the perspective of the observer on the platform, this acceleration is totally natural because that is the acceleration of the train. This watch, it's uh, at rest relative to the train, which means whatever acceleration, whatever velocity the train has, it's got to have the same acceleration, same velocity. Otherwise, it won't stay in place within the train. So, so you come to that piece where your acceleration is not zero, and that's exactly what you're expecting. If that's the case, this is the complete free body diagram. You have net force pointed to the right, and that's exactly what you want. Uh, that's question the what is the direction of the net force, and um, and and yeah, this is the complete free body diagram. We've done standard strategy step number one. Let's do step number two. Uh, we've identified the direction of acceleration, so we are going to define our coordinate axis that goes along the direction of acceleration. Let's say this is my x, this is my y. Step number two done. Step number three, we are going to be um, uh, breaking forces into components. Gravity is already along the direction y, so um, I need to break tension into x and y components. And whenever I do that, I like to break it up, I I'd like to draw them in a way that they complete a triangle, um, complete a right triangle. Then I can kind of look at the angles that are given in the problem, draw it here, and kind of from that angle and its relative position to the, the two legs, the sides of the um, triangle, I can write down expressions for the components of the uh, vector. So Tx, it's on the opposite side from the angle, uh, and the uh, T is for the entire uh, tension force. So Tx should be the hypotenuse times the sine theta from, you know, so sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So you solve it for the opposite. It's going to be the hypotenuse times the sine. So that's that. And you do the same thing for Ty. And because this is the leg that's adjacent to the angle, it'll be t times cosine theta. I recommend that you always do it this way because you can see how in this case, x got associated with sine theta and y with cosine theta. And that won't always happen that way. It won't always happen the other way. The only way to make sure that you don't make mistakes is to draw the figure and kind of work through that. So that's a step number three. And all these steps, steps one, two, three, they are geared towards producing this, which is an annotated free body diagram with all the information that you need for doing step number four, writing Newton's second law equation, which says that acceleration as a vector is equal to net force as a vector divided by m. And what it is, this means is it's actually two equations in one. There's the statement about acceleration along the x direction. So that's going to be this, a is equal to the net force in the x direction. That's just going to be the x component of tension, which is T sine theta. 
divided by its mass. That's one equation. And there's a second equation because the vector has multiple, can have multiple components. So when you look at the y component of acceleration, that's again going to be net force in the y direction divided by mass. In the y direction, you have two forces, ty and mg. So it's going to be t cosine theta. And I'm making upward positive, minus mg divided by m. That's your y acceleration. Now, here's the reason why we do step number two the way we do it. We put our x-axis along the direction of acceleration. So then the y-axis, the direction that's perpendicular to x, uh, your acceleration will be zero. The y component of the acceleration is zero because it's not accelerating that way. It's just accelerating horizontally. So that's the second equation that comes out of this vector relationship. And this is also the end of the standard strategy problem solving steps. And when you reach this point, it's good to kind of look at your inventory and see if you have everything you need. The main thing I like to do is uh, I want to make sure my mathematical equations involve all the information that I need to solve this question. And the kind of the most mechanical way to do it is count your equations. I got two. And after counting your equations, count your unknowns. I'm hoping to have two unknowns and two unknowns only so that I can solve for those two unknowns using my two equations. So let's count. The acceleration, I don't think we are given that. Are we given that? Um, no. Yeah, fine day. So it's we are not given that. This is unknown one. Tension. I don't think we are given that. Okay, so tension is unknown. That's two. Sine theta. I think we are given the theta yeah, in terms of the angle of the watch. We are um, not given mass. But let me put a question mark because there are a lot of different problem solving situations where masses cancel out anyway. This could be it. Um, so, you know, question mark on mass. Um, and I think that's everything. So AY, we are not using that. It's just going to be 0 is equal to tension already counted, cosine of theta already given, minus mg divided by m. Yeah. So I got two unknowns, two equations. We should be able to solve for those two unknowns. So, uh, so let's do that. So since they are asking us for acceleration, I'm going to be sure to solve for acceleration last. So my first intermediate step is to solve this equation for tension. If I do that, then I end up with the tension is equal to mass times acceleration divided by sine theta. Okay. And once I've solved for one of the unknowns, this becomes my tool for eliminating all the other unknowns that, um, all the other unknowns of the same kind that I don't really want around. So I want to get rid of this T. And the way to do it is plug this in. Let's see what we get and then simplify. So ay is equal to uh, t cosine theta that's uh, this t times uh, uh, yeah, times cosine theta so it'll be ma over sine theta times uh, cosine theta okay that's t cosine theta minus mg whole thing divided by m. Oh, I, I see m canceling. I got m in both the terms here. So they can both cancel out with that m downstairs. So you have a uh, y component of acceleration. And we know that this whole thing ought to be equal to 0 because uh, that's another one. So we have this equation here. Let me just write up the cleaned up version here. I have uh, a times cosine theta over sine theta minus g is equal to 0. So solving this for acceleration, we get acceleration is equal to move g over, and then multiply through by sine theta over cosine theta. Or if you want you to simplify this further, it would be g times tangent theta. So looking at that, oh yeah, so that's the acceleration. This acceleration that the thing is accelerating with, we can tell you the exact value. That's going to be equal to uh, g times tangent theta. 
Um, and it, it is a way of analyzing it where an object that has some position relative to something else that's bigger and that something else that's bigger is accelerating. So you drop back to inertial reference frame, like the reference frame of this guy sitting outside the train, and you can analyze the situation based on that. And you get this answer, a, a is equal to g tangent theta. I think that's an expression you've seen a few different times, but in different contexts. Just to make sure you can drive it again from scratch and uh, don't get confused by <laughs> other situations where a is equal to g tangent theta applies.